Don Freaks is the strongest and oldest NAND user in Hunter x Hunter. So old in fact that he could have likely created the Hunter Association itself nearly 300 years ago. Also, he is Gon's father, King Freaks. What the f*** does that mean? No, I know you're probably thinking, wait, did they make a mistake? Don Freaks is Gon's father? Don is King? How is that possible? But, however, what, what if I told, told you? you by the end of this video, we can give substantial evidence that King Freaks is indeed Don himself? No way! For example, look at how many years the Hunter exam has been running for. We are at year 289 of the exams right now. And how many years ago did Don Freak start writing his book Journey to the New World? 300 years ago. Which means he is older than the organization itself. Don after traveling to the shore of the dark continent realized just how massive this landmass and their world actually was. Just look at this map. That tiny little box is where the known world is. The shore alone is probably hundreds of thousands of kilometers in length. So just imagine the scale of the actual inner continent. Even if Don was the strongest, it would take him hundreds, even thousands of years to map it on his own. So why not establish an organization which selects people who have the will to explore and hunt the world? Also, you gotta be a certain type of crazy to even pass the hunter exam and that is the exact type of person who would take on the challenge of the dark continent. He's out of line, but he's right. So, who is this Don Freaks guy anyway? That's what you're probably wondering. Well, ladies and gentlemen, being the Chad you are who decided to click on this video, we aim to explain everything we know about Don Freaks and the secrets of the past. So get ready for your mind to be blown. Let's go! Don Freaks is the man who has catalogued the entire eastern shore of Lake Mobius in the Dark Continent. A place so scary and dangerous that it made even Isaac Netero waver as he used his influence to bar travel to it for 50 years until his death. Without Don Freaks' East Edition Journey to the New World, the Hunter Association would be even more oblivious to the Dark Continent than they already are. Through this book is how the the nations of the known world sent expeditions to different parts of the dark continent in search of world changing items like a rock which can produce double the electricity per day than what is used by the average American household in a whole year. Those of you who had the notification bell on already know about all the expeditions with our dark continent video we posted last week. Now the original copy of this book sits at the basement of the International Permit Agency, which is the governing body overseeing travel to the dark continent for the known world, at least on an official basis. But Jing also has a copy of this book given to him by Isaac Netero. Through Jing's character, we know of Don in the first place as he is telling beyond Netero and Parison's crew about the Dark Continent. Even the knowledge of how the Hunter Association came into possession of the East Edition is unknown. Jing states that there was a guy who tried to explore the entire Mobius shoreline by himself 300 years ago. He wrote a book about it, but only the East Edition has been found, with no sign of the West. It's possible that Don Freaks explored the East side 300 years ago and brought the book back to the known world, but also set out to explore the West. That's how the Hunter Association got their hands on it. However, there is a theory in the community that it was actually acquired by Isaac Netero during his unofficial trip to the Dark Continent estimated around 90 years ago. As Isaac stated, he explored the Dark Continent when he was a young man, which was before his training at 46 years old. Through the help of the knowledge in Don's journal is how Netero, Zig Zoldic and Lin survived the Dark Continent. With a survival rate of 0.04% and the only living people who had been sent to the landmass we know of currently being Netero's crew and his son, the stats don't favor Isaac Netero. Because by the looks of it, Netero still seems young enough that he didn't complete his year-long punch 
pray ritual on the mountains if you take a look at this picture. This would make him way weaker than we see him during the Miriam fight, which means he was not at his peak power during his Dark Continent visits. Oh. And by the way, the Chimera Ants are only deemed a Class B threat when compared to some of the calamities of the Dark Continent. If a stronger Isaac Netero lost to Miriam pretty easily, then it's hard to see him surviving the Dark Continent without help from the Journal or Don Freaks himself. So it's highly possible that Netero met Don Freaks in the Dark Continent. This would also explain why Netero specifically gave a copy of Don Don's book to Jing Freaks, who has the same last name as Don. Netero even went to the southeastern shore of Lake Mobius, which is where nitro rice is found. This is a substance which can increase your human life and longevity. Given Don's age of over 300 years old, he would have also been visiting this part of the continent to pick up some more nitro rice and happen to stumble upon Netero's group. Jing Freaks has his own prediction when it comes to what happened to Don and the western edition of the journey to the new world. Well, number one, the western edition is completed but it just hasn't been found yet. Number two, Don Freaks never completed the western edition and died on his pursuit. And number three, he is still writing it. Out of these three theories, number three is the most plausible as Jing himself looks confident stating it with a massive smile on his face. Jing is considered one of the series most intellectual characters. He had anticipated the majority of Gon's decision and action since he left home, including his participation in the hunter exam, his visit to Greed Island, and his encounter with Kite. In addition, he accurately predicted the procedure for determining the election rules and ensured that his team would win by outmaneuvering the other Zodiacs. Ging's predictions regarding the election of the new chairman of the hunter association were correct. And despite her dislike for Ging and her own intelligence, Cheadle sought his counsel. If Don Freaks is still writing the Western edition, then there is no way he finished the East edition 300 years ago. Because the East and the West shorelines are about the same size as the lake is, almost shaped like a rectangle. So either this dude is thousands of years old, or he finished mapping the East and happened to stumble upon Isaac Nelson and gave him his journal. If our theory about Don Freaks creating the Hunter Association is also correct, then Netero wanting the Hunters to explore the Dark Continent in his final message to the Zodiacs could be him passing on Don's will to the Association. Netero himself didn't want to explore it in his lifetime, as it wasn't fun for him. He claimed there were no opponents in the Dark Continent for him to conquer. There was only survival. So now, after his death, Netero is encouraging everyone else to follow the true purpose of the Hunter Association, to hunt the truth of the world and the Dark Continent. Netero starting his Shingen Ryu School of Martial Arts is also evidence to his goal of having the next generation venture into the Dark Continent fulfilling Don's dream. Before the prominence of the Shingen Ryu, Nen was an even bigger secret than it is now. Most people would only unlock Nen by forcing their aura nodes open by another Nen user. This causes extreme strain on the user, making some of them lose their legs, arms or even result in death. But the practitioners of Netero's teachings open their aura nodes by not only strengthening their body but their will as well through meditation called Ten. One must use Ten to strengthen their will with rigorous training. Even a kid like Zushi, who was said to be one in a hundred thousand talent by Wing, wasn't even close to fully mastering Nen. The creation of the Shingen Ryu system meant that the world of Nen posed less risk to the wider population, and even less talented people could strengthen their will to unlock Nen. This would allow for way more hunters to exist in the world, because the final test of the hunter exam is if you can use Nen or not. Adil has just raised a magnificent 
point because with this influx of hunters, it would make it easier to traverse the dark continent and give the people a higher chance of survival, furthering Dawn's wishes. A key evidence for Dawn's will of hunters helping explore the dark continent comes from Kurapika's one shot. Kurapika wanted to leave and see the outside world after he read a book with a protagonist named D Hunter. This man taught Kurapika that to live the best life you have to overcome obstacles. Currently, for humanity, the biggest obstacle is the Dark Continent, as there are five world-ending threats already present in the known world. Plus, the B-level Chimera Ants nearly turned the world into livestock. To overcome these hurdles, humans must learn about where they come from and analyze them. So, in order to do that, they need to go into the Dark Continent. It's also a glaring hint that this character's actual name is D Hunter, like Don freaks Don the first hunter you, you get, get it? it if you don't get it forget about it it's very likely that this book is just a fictionalized story about the adventures of Don freaks if he is writing a journal for the dark continent expedition then he must have written about his exploits in the human realm his journal from 300 years ago could have been the inspiration for the book Kurapika is reading similar to how we in the real world fictionalize the lives of people from the past for example example, Narcos or the Peaky Blinders. They are series rooted in reality, but are at the end of the day, exaggerated and fiction. Even Don Freaks' journey to the new world was seen as fiction until recently, as stated in chapter 340. It makes perfect sense that Don's goal of discovering the shoreline will give the humans a chance to build a base of operations and survive in the dark continent so they can launch further expeditions to the rest of the continent. It's kind of like like setting up base camps on Everest in order to make it easier to reach the summit by more people. And the people might also need to acclimate to the environment itself just like before climbing a mountain, you must live for weeks on high altitude. However, there is one There's slight problem with on Don surviving here. for 300 just years in the dark continent. Up. Even if he was using nitro rice to prolong his life or somehow control the immortality disease, this would only stop him from dying of natural causes. Any unknown creature would game end him, especially if we look at the beasts like Aluka who can grant any wish. With such power, even things with high regeneration could be wiped out. It's kind of like you're playing Elden Ring, just exploring about and you encounter a new boss. It's highly possible that you will die in your first attempt of fighting the boss. You don't know what the hell the dude's abilities are. Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course! Oh my god! So what do you do? You respawn or resurrect. And guess what Jing's name is based off of? And or called Zinkite as stated in the Hunterpedia. If we separate Zinkite into two, we get Zin and Kite. This stone symbolizes individuality, creativity, and resurrection. All three of these qualities apply to Kite. Kite is creative in his application of Nen. He has one of the most ingenious and one-of-a-kind Nen abilities with his crazy slots. He values individuality as shown by how he was teaching Killua and Gon by just leaving them to fight the Chimera Ants and letting them learn for themselves. Even his claim to the boys about if they can't hang with them, he will leave them behind and do the mission alone of investigating the ants proves this. He then resurrected as an ant through one of his crazy slots powers. But so far, we only know of two qualities that apply to Jing. He is creative, shown in his bout against Pariston, where he created Leorio's Nen ability and enhanced it after just taking one punch from him. He's individualistic, shown by how much of a loner he is and how he even left his own own son to pursue his desires. But we haven't seen the resurrection. What if Don Freaks has been resurrecting onto a Freaks every time he dies in his exploration of the Dark Continent? This makes far more sense when we just take a look at what Jing says to Gon when they first meet during the election. As Gon is rushing to see Kite, Jing informs him that he knows 
kite resurrected because he was the one who taught him Nen. This sounds a little sus if you ask me. We know from Jing's childhood in Whale Island, he always wanted to leave and as soon as he turned 12, he bolted and became a hunter. After becoming a hunter, his curiosity seems to align with archaeology, discovering lost ruins and ancient findings. How does this boy from a small fishing outpost come to have such grand desires that he left his kid behind? We learned early on in the series during the hunter exam that a great hunter isn't just good at hunting, but he's best at also not being hunted. Gon learned this the hard way when he was training with his fishing rod non-stop to catch Hisoka's badge. Although he succeeded, he instantly got sniped and lost it as he wasn't covering his tracks properly. Jing somehow already had this knowledge in mind. He was already a proficient hunter before he even took the hunter exam. At age 12, Jing left Whale Island to take the 267th hunter exam, where he was the only one to become a hunter, which is a crazy feat on its own. For example, it even took Killua learning about Nen and training from Bisky, plus already being trained as an assassin since birth to achieve such a feat. But this 12 year old from an island in the middle of nowhere walked in and rinsed the floor with everything. We also know that Nen is fueled by desire, a purpose and determination. Every strong character in Hunter x Hunter has something they want. Kurapika wants revenge on his clan by killing the phantom troop. Leorio wants to become a doctor. Members of the troop have their own purpose of taking from the world which never gave them anything in Meteor City. Netero wants to keep finding strong opponents and surpassing his limits. Gon's purpose was ignited by Jing, leaving him as he wanted to meet his father. But what about Jing? Well, it could be that he already had a sense of direction and urges through his reincarnation as Don Freaks, who is strong enough to live in the Dark Continent. Furthermore, being fascinated by ancient ruins is the fascination with the unknown, the mysterious. Now question yourself, what is more mysterious and alluring than to discover a whole new continent with unknown creatures, medicine, and landscape? However, we have confirmation that there are in fact ancient ruins ruins in the dark continent through the voyage of the United States of Saherta. And Jing not having any memories of the dark continent be the effects of a Nen pack. We know the effects of Nen are stronger when the user dies or if it's a tough binding promise. For example, Gon made a Nen contract allowing him to sacrifice all the Nen he will ever have in his life till Neferpito. The result of Gon's action allowed his body to mature into that of a rhyme. He grew immensely powerful because the contract price was a fair trade, not a potential penalty. Gon's limitations are finite and he gave up his life and Nen. This is even enforced by Jing himself when Gon is saddened that he doesn't have Nen anymore when he calls his dad for advice in chapter 344. All of this means that the condition for Don's resurrectional contract is that he will lose his memories of the previous lives and the only way for him to gain those memories back is by stepping back into the dark continent. Plus, we know just how hard it is to get back to the Dark Continent, especially with no memories. The Journal of Journey to the New World would be his guide to do that. Netero could have learned this through his meeting with Don Freaks where he posed the question, how have you not died of unnatural causes yet? And Don could have relayed his resurrection secrets to Netero. Which is why Netero specifically gave the copy of this book to none other than Jing Freaks, noticing the same qualities and aura as Dawn. Even Jing creating a MMO-like game in Greed Island plays <laughs> into the respawn mechanic which is used in video games of our world. Because Greed Island itself borrows a lot of aspects from JRPGs which Togashi loved to play. This entire theory answers many questions, such as the known world only having the East edition of his journal. Number two, how Netero, Zig, Lene, and only Beyond have been able to survive the Dark Continent and return to their daily lives. And lastly, why Jing is so powerful and likely has an even better mastery of Nen than the 110 years plus old geezer Isaac Netero. Jing is a polymath since he has great knowledge in several academic disciplines. However, he asserts that he only studies topics that pique his interest. This is a perfect person that is suited to explore the Dark Continent. He has everything required in a hunter to finish off the journey Dawn had started. If you want to learn more about the journeys that have already taken place on the Dark Continent, like Netero's unofficial voyage, then you should click the video on screen right now. That shit is another bang.